Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare We continue reading from Srimad Bhagavatam. We are on Canto 4, Chapter 9, Text 17. Um, Satya Shishohi Bhagavam Stavapada Padmam Satya Shishohi Bhagavam Stavapada Padmam Ashis Tathano Bajata Purushartha Murtehe Ashis Tathano Bajata Purushartha Murtehe Apeva Maria Bhagavan Paripati Dinan Apeva Maria Bhagavan Paripati Dinan Vashreva Vatsakam Anugraha Kataro Asman Vashreva Vatsakam Anugraha Kataro Asman Translation and purport by Sthavan Kris A.C. Bhaktivedanta Samishla Prabhupada. My Lord, O Supreme Lord, you are the supreme personified form of all benediction. Therefore, one who abides in your devotional service with no other desire, worshipping your lotus feet is better than becoming king and lording it over a kingdom. That is the benediction of worshipping your lotus feet. To ignorant devotees like me, you are the costlessly merciful maintainer, just like a cow who takes care of the newly born calf by supplying milk and giving it protection from attack. Dhruv Maharaj was cognizant of the defective nature of his own devotional service. So now Dhruv Maharaj is realizing that, okay, he wanted a kingdom. That's the reason he engaged in devotional service. Pure devotional service is without material form and is not covered by mental speculation or fruitive activities. So pure devotional service is when the devotee has no more material desires. He, he doesn't have any material desire. And he's not desiring liberation. He's not desiring any of the eight mystic siddhis. His um, mood is just to engage in devotional service for the pleasure of Krishna, following in the footsteps of the previous acharyas. And that is pure devotional service. Anyabila Sita Shunyam, Jnana Karmadi Anabitam, Anukul Yena Krishna, Nu, Shilanam Bhaktir Uttama. So Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 18, text 54. He says in text 54, Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma Nasochati Nakangshati Sama Sarveshu Bhuteshu Mad Bhaktim Labhate Param. He says that pure devotional service begins from the liberated platform. So yesterday we were discussing what happens after liberation. So Krishna says that once one is liberated, only then he can engage in pure devotional service. So means well, after the living, so this Krishna is saying in the 18th chapter, that after liberation, then the soul can engage in pure devotional service. So pure devotional service is therefore called ahaituki, unmotivated. Dhruv Maharaj knew that he had come to worship the Lord in devotional service with a motive to get the kingdom of his father. Such an adulterated devotee can never see the Supreme Personality of Godhead face to face. He therefore felt very grateful for the causeless mercy of the Lord. So Dhruv Maharaj is realizing that he was not engaged in pure, pure devotional service. He wanted something. And yet he is able to see the Lord. The Lord is so merciful that not only does he fulfill the desires of a devotee who is driven by ignorance and desires for material benefit, but he also gives such a devotee all protection 
just as a cow gives milk to a newly born calf. So Krishna is not saying, oh, you came to me for with a desire, so I'm not going to accept your devotional service. No, Krishna is accepting. He himself says in Bhagavad Gita that four types of pious people come to him. Those in distress, those seeking wealth, those in knowledge, those who are inquisitive. And he protects all of them. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is said that the Lord gives intelligence to the constantly engaged devotee so that he may gradually approach the Lord without difficulty. And Krishna says, to those who are constantly devoted to serving me with love, I give the intelligence by which they can come to me. Krishna is in our heart. He knows our desires. He knows what we want. And he gives us the intelligent, how we can come closer and closer to him. A devotee must be very sincere in his devotional service. Then although there may be many things wrong on the devotee's part, Krishna will guide him and gradually elevate him to the highest position of devotional service. So we may have a lot of faults, we may have a lot of desires, we may have Whatever, but we still engage in hearing and chanting. And Krishna will gradually, gradually uh, clean, purify our heart of all the material contamination. The Lord is addressed here in Madhruv Maharaj as Purushartha Murti, the ultimate goal of life. So Dhruv Maharaj is saying, the ultimate goal of life is Krishna. We make so many goals, so many different goals, yearly goals, monthly goals, you know, daily goals. But here, Rupa Maharaj is saying the ultimate goal is Lord Krishna. Generally, Purushartha is taken to mean execution of a type of religious principle or worship of God in order to get material benediction. Prayers for material benediction are intended for satisfying the senses. And when one is frustrated and cannot fully satisfy the senses, in spite of all endeavor, he desires liberation or freedom from material existence. These activities are generally called Purushartha. So usually the yoga ladder explains us what happens is we engage in pious activities that's karma kant. And why we do that? Because to get pious result. Why we want pious result? Because we know with pious result, we can get more opulence, more um, facilities to enjoy. And then we want to enjoy. And then we enjoy. But then we come to a point of frustration, understanding, oh, no matter how much I'm enjoying, it's still frustrating. And then we say, oh, this world is false. I want liberation. This, this entire thing is false. So the, all these activities is called Purushartha. But actually the ultimate goal is to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is called Panchama Purushartha, the ultimate goal of life. But the highest goal is to understand Lord. Krishna is saying, Vedas cha sarve aham eva vedya. By all the Vedas, I am to be known. So the reason we have to study the scriptures is to understand Krishna. Krishna himself is saying this in the Bhagavad Gita. Lord Chaitanya therefore taught us not to ask from the Supreme Personality any benediction, such as material wealth, popularity, or a good wife. One should simply pray to the Lord to be constantly engaged in his transcendental loving service. So Lord Chaitanya in his Shikshashtakam prayers, he says, Na dhanam, na janam, na sundarim, kavitam va jagat isha kamaye, mama janmani janma ishware, bhavatad bhaktir ahai to kitwai. Lord Chaitanya is teaching us that the devotee, the pure devotee, what does he say? I don't, na dhanam, na janam, na sundarim. That I do not want any wealth, I do not want popular followers, I do not want a good wife, I just simply want a transcendental loving service. Dhruv Maharaj, being cognizant of his desire for material benefit, 
wanted protection from the Lord so that he might not be misled or deviated from the path of devotional service by material desires. So what protection Dhruv Maharaj wants? To protect his devotional service. He's, he's asking the Lord to protect his devotional service so that, because we are in the material world after all, we don't know when the desires will come in, what desires are still dormant in our heart, when they might sprout. So Dhruv Maharaj is asking that protection that he always continues in devotional service and does not take it, get overcome by the material desires. And so, as Guru Maharaj said the other day, we may have a lot of material desires, but we continue to chant Hare Krishna. Cheto Darpana Marjanam. We chant and chant, take shelter of Krishna, and gradually, gradually, our heart will get purified. Is that okay? I just want to ask that sometimes we say that the devotional service begins from the platform of liberation, but then the devotees don't even want liberation. So that means that this continue, right? Because they don't yeah, want they liberation. Can. So they keep continue serving, serving, and then that's what it means, right? Yeah, pure devotional service. Because liberation means what? To completely understand, realize that I'm not the body, I'm the soul. The realization is there. And then, yeah. so Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, that from that point, mm. pure devotional service begins. Okay. Because the devotee doesn't stop there. He yeah, doesn't, he doesn't stop there. And he doesn't stop there. And he still continues serving, serving. So that's how from there. Because for some people, liberation is the end point of life. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. Yes, that's okay. right. But the devotee continues because he wants to have the loving relationship with Krishna. We okay. were speaking about the loving relationship with Krishna. And so the, the devotee wants to be situated in that loving relationship with Krishna. Okay. And so at our stage also, we, we pray to Krishna that, my dear Krishna, I would like to be situated in my relationship with you. And the yeah. best prayer is to chant Hare Krishna mantra. Prabhupada would say that when we are chanting, we should, because many devotees would ask, what, what shall I think of when I'm chanting? And Shla Prabhupada would say, you don't have to think anything, you just hear. But then the devotee still said, but yet, so he said, you can say, please accept me, please accept me. Focus on the on our relationship with Krishna. You know, because we we each of us have an eternal love, loving relationship with Krishna, and we can be situated in that. We simply have to revive it. So we we begin now. We begin now. One question, uh, Shilpa. Uh, isn't the ultimate goal is back to Godhead, like be with Krishna, like face to face? Isn't that should be the goal? I mean, I That's know right. once you are with Krishna, you are going to have that transcendental loving relationship with Krishna. So yes. I'm just wondering that why Dhruv is saying just to have that transcendent loving relation, just engage in that relationship. And not ask for like, I want to be with you. Face it's the same. Person. It's yeah. the same. <laughs> it's the same. It's the same. See, pure devotional service. The So Krishna, wherever there is pure hearing and chanting, Krishna is there, no? So the devotee is with Krishna. And then being face to face with Krishna. See. The devotee can see Krishna when you're having pure devotee. Yes. Yeah, okay. And then, of course, the devotee desires to be rendering personal service, right? As you say, face to face. Yes, it's it's yes. all, it's the same, you know, because what happens is the devotee is also humble. Then he realizes that at that stage that he realizes, oh, how I can demand Krishna that I need to be with you. I've been so fallen. I rejected this beautiful relationship and now I'm demanding Krishna. So rather, Krishna, wherever you want me to be, 
be it hell, be it anywhere, just let me engage in your devotional service. The devotee speaks out of humility. But it's all the same. I had asked this question to Guru Maharaj. He said, going back to Godhead, engaging in pure devotional service is the same. The consciousness is with Krishna. Okay. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah, and the devotee wants to be with Krishna face to face. The devotee wants that. You know, go back, go look Vrindavan, be with Krishna, have a personal relationship with him, personal, engage in the personal loving service. Yeah, that's the desire of the devotee. But then you said like we can't even, we should not ask that because we should be humble. Like we know that we have done so many. <laughs> yeah, but we still ask. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, we still, we can ask. Nothing like, of course, right? we still... Nothing like, yeah, going back to Godhead. Being yeah. The Prabhupada would say, yes, we should desire to go back to Godhead, you know. We we des we should desire. We are not that elevated devotees that we can be here in the material world and just engage in service. So we should desire go back back to Godhead. Because we have seen the examples of Sanatan Goswami and Arupa Goswami. They were they were pure devotees. They were liberated. Everything they were still engaged, and they also had Krishna face to face. They could see, right? Yeah, yeah. They are on another yeah, level. They are the, on, yeah, they are on. Yes, they are eternal. So that's what so, consoles yeah. of yeah, yeah. So, so in spite so, of being in the material, but they could see Krishna face to face. Yes, yeah. Right? yeah. So they yes. can say that. So, but although their mood was, oh, where is Radharani? Where mm. is Krishna? Where is Lalita? They never said, oh, I'm dancing with Krishna, Ras Leela. Yeah. No, mm. just so that. Because then, you know, we will also start no, imitating. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, then we will also start uh, imitating, you know. Right. So to set an example for us, the Goswamis would always say, oh, where is Radharani? Where is Krishna? Where is Lalita? Where is Vishakha? I'm so fallen. I don't have their association. But for our us, yeah, we should have this firm desire. I want to go back to Godhead, you know. I want to go back home. I want to be with Krishna. Yeah. And and we we can pray to Krishna even even now that we can pray to Krishna, my dear Krishna, I want to be situated in my relationship with you. We don't have to wait till we leave the body to be situated in our relationship with Krishna. We can be situated in our relationship with Krishna even now. There are so many people who, uh, who think of Krishna as their children, so they take care of Krishna in that way, you know. I think it's very important to have that relationship, one relationship you have to keep with Krishna. Yes. Right? Yes. Build a relationship yes. with Krishna. Yes. yes, a relationship with Krishna. And we have to understand that Krishna is our best friend. Yeah. He says that himself in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 5, text 29. Suridam Sarva Bhutana. He's the best friend of all living entities. So he is our best friend. And that's a relationship too. But yeah, but we can we can uh, we can want to be in a relationship with Krishna as a parent or as a servant or as a lover as a friend. Yeah, so relationship with Krishna, very important. And how can we be situated in that relationship? How to be actually situated? Because if it's just on the mental platform, then it's still on the mental platform, right? It's still material. But how can we be really situated in that relationship? We need to chant. Chant the Hare Krishna mantra. 
deep, deep shelter and and yeah in surrender surrender chant chant with that mood that i want to be situated in my relationship with krishna I just want to add to this one thing that yes, we are in Tamoguni and we do activities that are Tamoguni at times. We don't know because yesterday we, we went to watch a movie Avatar 2 and it is Tamogun. I know. Even Dhruv told me that now you're going to give your three hours for Tamogun. I know. But when you see them, you can remember Krishna in that also. Because, because that intelligence that he got to make that, that comes from Krishna. Otherwise, person, otherwise we humans have no power to do such things. Because it is Krishna's gift. So yes, we can't control some things. We have to with everybody because we end this. So, but then we can appreciate that oh Krishna, thank you. What a what a thing that is. So that is also a way to connect because we are not forgetting when we are out in the material world, we have not forgotten him. That is also one practical way to connect to him in everything. That when you see something nice, you because that comes from Krishna as we are reading in Bhagavad Gita 10th chapter. He's the best in everything. So that was quite practical for me in every moment in the movie. Yes, I remember Krishna because it was wondrous how we say that 8,400,000 8, species are there. So yes, that was wondrous. It is somehow Krishna's in Krishna who gave him the intelligence. Otherwise, nobody can do such things. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. So we'll read one more. Maitreya Uvacha. Maitreya Uvacha. Atabhishtuta evam ve. Atabhishtuta evam ve. Sat sankal pena di mata. Sat sankal pena di mata. Bratyanu rakto bhagavan. Bratyanu rakto bhagavan. Pratinandye dam abravet. Pratinandye dam abravet. The great sage Maitreya continued, my dear Vidur. When Dhruv Maharaj, who had good intentions in his heart, finished his prayer, the Supreme Lord, the Personality of Godhead, who is very kind to his devotees and servants, congratulated him, speaking as follows. So Maitreya, Lord, so Maitreya Muni is saying, yeah, Dhruv Maharaj was seeing the Lord, and the Lord is speaking these following words. So the Lord is a person. And that's the reason he can speak. Otherwise, how can he speak? And he's very kind to his devotees. He's Bhaktavatsal. He's always fulfilling the desires of his devotees. That is the position of God. He doesn't say, oh, I'm God, get out of here. You know, we go do something great. We do something good get so proud and be like, who are you? You know, I know better than you. But here he's God himself. And he's very kind to the devotees. Should we stop here for today? Did anyone yes. want to add? Did anyone want to add anything else? Or? Hare Krishna. 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 Hare